Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonboon.com and today I want to show you how to make sourdough crepes. This recipe today I'm going to give two ways. The first way is going to be the official on the blog, maybe a weekend breakfast way. And the second way is going to be the way that I've been making them almost daily lately for my kids. Now the reason I've been making them so much is they've gotten really sick of eggs and this is a way to eat a whole lot of eggs, get that good protein in the morning, but to not be eating just eggs. We're gonna start by adding eight eggs to this large bowl. This for reference is the more official recipe. And this recipe will also be on the blog with a printable recipe card. So if this is something you'd like to print out to save for later, or maybe save it to Pinterest, it'll be there for that. To that, I'm going to add a cup of sourdough starter. I have an einkorn fed sourdough starter. I've fed it many different flowers over the years, but lately it's been einkorn. This starter has been alive for nine years. If you want more details on how to start your own starter or why you would want to, I have some videos on that. I'll leave a link down in the description box below. I'm going to get some butter melting on the stove. I'm gonna do about three tablespoons. I was able to pick up this from a local farmer recently, some raw milk butter. She doesn't always have it, but when she does, obviously I buy it. I'm just gonna estimate three tablespoons. Next, I'm gonna add about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. I just have a pink Himalayan salt here. And then about three quarters of a cup of milk. While I'm waiting on that butter to melt, I'm just gonna start giving this a little stir with my mixer here. Now you could use a hand mixer, electric one, obviously. I love these old beaters. I got these years ago. I think someone actually got them for me as decoration for my kitchen. And ever since then, I've just been using them. I love them. Let me get my butter in here. And I just like to stir it until it's frothy and bubbly. And light. All right, next I'm going to get my cast iron skillets preheating. This actually I should have done first. Now, if you've never cooked with cast iron before, the key is you want them hot before you add your food, in which case nothing will stick. If you do put something onto a cold skillet, it will stick. Now, I just started a podcast and just a few days ago, I actually shared all of my tips for cooking with cast iron cleaning it, everything I know about cast iron. I've been using it pretty much exclusively for about nine-ish years now, and I absolutely love it. So you can check that out. My podcast is Simple Farmhouse Life. You can find it on all the podcast players. Now the key to frying these and having them not stick, especially if you're using a cast iron skillet, other than preheating, is to make sure they're thin. So you don't wanna to do too much batter. You don't want it pooled up high in your cast iron skillet. I'll pour in about a half a cup per crepe and then kind of move it around so that it's evenly distributed and it's all getting cooked. And then you make sure that it is almost fully cooked through before you flip it. If you flip it too early, it will break in half. Now don't worry, if that does happen, it happens to me sometimes, you can just obviously still eat it. It'll still be delicious. It just won't be able to be filled and rolled up like a pretty round crepe would. Now this recipe makes about a dozen crepes, which if you are filling them will serve probably six people. But if you're just eating them plain, like I do on my everyday breakfast, which I'll show you in a minute, it would serve less. So this amount would probably feed my five kids. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to make a really delicious filling. I'm going to start by adding one package of cream cheese to my bowl. I'm gonna add to that about a quarter of a teaspoon or a half teaspoon of vanilla extract and about a quarter of a cup of honey or maple syrup. Either one will work great. 
and then I'm just gonna mix it up. Now, the more softened this cream cheese is, the easier it'll be to stir up. So if you know you're gonna be making this, set it out a little bit in advance. If not, you can definitely get it incorporated. It's just a little bit trickier. Once that's all incorporated, then I'm just going to whip up a half of a pint of cream until it is nicely whipped cream. And then I'm just going to take the two and fold them together. Next, after you've folded the two together, add the filling to the crepes and just roll it up. Now at this point, sometimes I like to add chocolate chips in the middle. Dark chocolate chunks from Trader Joe's tip, if you have a Trader Joe's in your area, is the best chocolate to fill with these. They are really small, so it's not like you're biting into a huge piece of chocolate and they're cut very unevenly and so it's really pretty. Anyways, chocolate, blueberries, sliced strawberries, those are all some of our favorites. Sliced bananas are really good. And then if you wanna get really fancy, if you have guests and you wanna have a brunch, top it with a little bit of powdered sugar just for that presentation effect. And then of course some real maple syrup also makes it really delicious. All right, now that is the fancy, maybe you're making brunch, maybe it's a Saturday or Sunday morning treat. Let me tell you about the way that I've been doing it every day for my family lately. Now, I like to do eggs for breakfast. One, because we have chickens and we get a lot of eggs. Now right now, because it's winter, we're not getting a ton, but I still buy a lot of eggs and we keep a lot of eggs. I just really like that way of starting the day with a high amount of protein, but my kids get really sick of it. So this way was inspired by my friend Stephanie. She has a blog at Hopewell Heights. She's a local friend to me. I'm actually gonna be having her on my podcast next week. Probably by the time this goes out, she'll have already been on my podcast. So check out that episode. All of this will be linked in the description. But anyway, she shared on her Instagram where she made crepes for her family. And she just put a whole bunch of eggs into a bowl with a little bit of sourdough starter. There was no mixing. And so based on that, I came up with my own little way of doing it. So what I do is I add 12 eggs to a bowl. I toss in maybe about a half-ish to a cup-ish of milk or cream. This is the no measure way. I promise you it works every time. And then I just add a couple of scoops of sourdough starter. So I have my fed sourdough starter that sits over on my counter. And because we've been making these all the time, it's been sitting there. I just take a couple wooden spoonfuls and throw it in there. And then I also add a dash of salt because everything tastes a little bit better with salt. Now, if you want to avoid adding any extra sweetener, at the end, so I know with my kids, it gets kind of tedious to, every time somebody wants a new crepe or a new pancake, add the syrup. I don't really trust them to do it because they'll get too much. So what I like to do for this easy morning breakfast is just add a little bit of sweetness to it so that way they can't ask for syrup. So instead of doing syrup, I'll just put like a tablespoon or two of either organic sugar or honey or maple syrup into the batter. That way we can avoid the syrup. Now another way we're able to avoid the syrup is I cook these with blueberries. So I take that, what I just told you, mix it all up with my trusty vintage beater, and then I cook them in my cast iron skillets. Now I get four going at a time for this. This is just a way to get it done super quickly. I actually shared this over on my Instagram story, so it's saved as a story highlight if you wanna see this in action. But I get all four skillets going, and I just get them nice and hot, and I am just flipping crepes. That way I can get the whole job done really quickly, and then everybody can eat. So what I do is I get about a half a cup of the batter, and then I put it on my skillet, and then I just add the blueberries while it's cooking. And then the blueberries get nice and hot because they were frozen, and that also kind of sweetens the crepe. And then everybody gets a lot of eggs, not very much grains but they don't complain because it's a little bit sweet and something a little bit different. It tastes like you're getting a ton of carbs, but in reality, you're really not. Just a little bit of sourdough starter that has been fermented fully and has been sitting on the counter for 24 hours. So all those benefits of sourdough are there and everyone is happy. All right, well, make sure to check out the blog. I'm gonna have a printable recipe card for this official recipe. And then I'll also have a paragraph where I'm explaining this method that I do every morning for the kids. It's so super simple and it's a great way to get more eggs in their diet. Now, another way that I've done a similar concept is the exact same recipe but with a little bit of sweet potatoes or pumpkin and that makes like a pumpkin pancake that is mostly eggs and no grains. Now, my sister, Lara, over at Our Oily House, she has that recipe on her blog, so I'll leave that down in the description box below as well in case you want a more exact recipe. Also, I do have a free sourdough ebook with all of our favorite sourdough recipes. 
to get your copy of it right to your inbox. You can download it and have access to all my favorite sourdough recipes in one place. You can just go to bit.ly slash farmhouse sourdough. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.